baby boomers grow older and start moving to smaller dwellings, children are faced with a dilemma. Their parents' possessions, furniture, keepsakes, and heirlooms that our parents want to pass on are often not wanted by the children. So what do you do with all the stuff, and how do you approach the subject? Well, here to tell us how is aging expert Anthony Cirillo. Hello, sir. How are you doing? I'm Tough good. subject, too. Yep. Indeed. Okay, so let's dive right in. How do you talk to your mom and dad about all their stuff, about their possessions. Yeah, so many times as I come on here, I always say do things earlier, right, before mm -hmm. they become a crisis. So that's really the first thing. You, you need to understand and have these conversations earlier. The other thing about, you know, stuff and possessions, that if you look at it three ways, people keep things for a utility. They do something. It's aesthetic. It, it looks good. Uh, and then it's sentimental. And so if you look at it that way, you can also approach conversations that way, uh, even to the point that you look at the sentimental stuff maybe last, because it's going to be the most sensitive. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. So my, my wife, um, Kathy, her mom passed away just last month. But we knew that you know, it was coming for about a year. And so she went up there and had almost a year-long conversation with her mother about what do you want, who should get what, mm -hmm. things like that. And again, it was over time. And so when... Um, right before she passed, we moved her from a, um, her apartment to an assisted living. We literally did it within five days. But it was like, uh, you know, project management, you know, operation, you know. Uh, and we got her, got her out and everything in its place. You know, what siblings were going to get this, that, what needed to go in her apartment. Now, it doesn't always go that way. And sometimes people, you know, live it, leave it in a will and people, you know, not realizing that, we don't want your furniture, we don't want your silverware, so mm -hmm. let's try to deal with it before that mm. happens. You know, one of the biggest problems that I find with my brothers and sisters is that we're not on the same page. My brother talks to my mom, I don't talk to my mom, my sister talks to my mom, and none of us are on the same page, and because of that, it causes a lot of problems. Can you address that? Yeah, so uh, obviously if you have siblings now, in my case, when my mom passed, my sister had already predeceased. my mom was 94, she'd been downsized five times, so there was, wasn't really a whole lot to mm -hmm. talk about except talk to me, uh, but my wife had three other siblings siblings but again that process with her mother also started with her siblings so they kind of you know there were three that were more of I need the sentiment there's some things sentimental like my wife wanted the Lennox Christmas plates because we had given her a lot of them so mm -hmm. she you know we kind of wanted them and when there's one sister needed practical things like furniture and things like that but it doesn't always go that well I have friends and this literally happened with somebody where they a uh, sister pulled up to the house, called the brother, and said, where are you? I'm in front of mom's. I have a U-Haul, and I'm taking the stuff. Wow. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so uh, you got to be aware of that. And again, th that gets into the legal issues later. The executor's going to be pulling their hair out. So again, as simple as it sounds, you, you need to get on the same page earlier. And it means you got to talk to each other, and a lot of families just don't do that. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. That is tough. Um, what happens if there are no children to mm -hmm. inherit? Yep. Well, maybe there's nieces and nephews. Okay. So that might be the first first place to start the other thing is uh, we've we have we've had a segment before about senior move managers so these are people who can come in your house and help downsize you if you want to stay in the house or downsize you to help move out of the house the other thing the other beauty about this uncluttering thing is that you don't have to wait till you're older to be able to do this we can be doing it just as a natural part of our lives there's a book called the life the life-changing magic of tidying, tidying up. up it's fantastic there you go yes and, and so you know they they look for this kind of uh, strategic initiative you know go into each room get everything out you know you have five frying pans why do you need it if you stare <laughs> at it long enough you're probably going to get rid of one or two yeah. so you know anybody could be starting to clean up sooner and there's another um, site called spaceclear.com that people want to want to check out okay so realistically what are some of the options for letting go of possessions so again you could start the process of uncluttering yourself okay. even as simple as putting things in boxes and if you haven't touched it in six weeks or whatever you know mm -hmm. you, 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 know, you may it. not use it figure out the family thing you know who's going to get what maybe they get it sooner than later then figure out your own am i going to go in a senior community and what am i going to need then it's kind of you know what do i do with the rest so mm -hmm. some people could postpone the inevitable by uh, doing self-storage or putting it in, in the will to be sold later you could sell it uh, obviously you can give it to charity now here's the thing about charity is that what's happening is that in places like Goodwill and Habitat are getting a little more selective about what they want mm -hmm. and and coming to get it you know they won't come up to two, two, two stories to take it out I had two credenzas we were you know you know fixing our bedrooms and unless I got it to the first floor they didn't want it so they I had to hire a company pay them to take it out and they were going to donate it to charity so you have to realize that 
that doesn't always work. And the final thing I'll say is this is for some uh, for sentimental reasons. If, if, so, if there's something you absolutely have to get rid of that's sentimental, you might want to think about taking a picture of it and then documenting what it what it is and you can put it on the cloud there's a service called digital life cloud out there well, where you can put it out there and so if you want to remember it it's out yeah. there so th there's idea. some tips it's a nice idea yeah um anthony thank you very much check out anthony's website it's called theagingexperience.com theagingexperience.com we appreciate your time always thank you sir well more magic coming up on charlotte